Hello, Reformers, and welcome back to Fantasy Cow Radia. Now, when we left off, we had just taken Ironston Castle, the last remaining fief of the Blazing Hand, and Grandmaster Tenalia did attempt to retaliate against us for our slight interloping of her territory. But, yes, we have now caught up to her. Thankfully enough, she did run for quite a significant distance. She only had... 0.1 slower than us, so we were, yeah, taking a little bit of time to catch up. And without further ado, we are going to... Wait a minute, should we make... No, let's not make peace. Let us take her out, because we do need the morale. Yes, we're having quite a great difficulty when it comes to the morale, and I do believe the Blazing Hand vassals are going to be leaving very, very soon. They're going to be leaving their faction very soon, and... I am not entirely sure, but it appears as though every single tree, every single thin tree in the universe is conspiring against us to block me whenever they can. So yes, let's try to be a little bit more mindful of those things. And also to bless our units as best we can. That's exactly what we want to see. Okay, it appears they're just going to be charging straight at us. So yeah, we're going to get our archers hopefully in a good position. But we do need to be rather cautious. They do have a lot of cavalry. And I mean a lot. They have a huge amount by the looks of things. And I'm just hopeful that I'll actually be able to do some damage to them. There we go. There's a nice bit of damage to one of their Blazing Hand Squires. Not bad at all if I do say so myself. I would like to be able to take out some of the mages if they have any. I don't think they do actually, but yes, as we know, we do get barbecued rather significantly many, many times. And wow, that was actually a really nice hit from us right there. I am actually really surprised. Wow, okay. I suppose that's always a good thing when you surprise yourself in these kinds of battles. And I'm not entirely sure where all of our units are, but they do appear to be running around after something that is not really very useful. So let's hope that they actually change their tact very, very soon to help us out. We did lose a Blazing Hand Inquisitor, but as I say that, it's not actually that bad if we lose any units here, because we are, of course, having a great deal of difficulty with the morale, and that is, of course, because we are at war against the Blazing Hand right now, but hopefully that will change very, very soon. And that reminds me, we really need to get Veteran a better horse. Even though this Hunter horse is actually very good, I would expect that an armored horse would be a little bit more in keeping with what he's currently attempting to do, but there it is. Three renown, eight morale. Ooh, I was hoping for a little bit more than that, but what can you do? So, I am actually unsure what I should do here. Should I take Grandmaster Tonali a prisoner? Maybe? Or should we let her go? Hmm, this is difficult. If we take her prisoner, does that mean that we gain relation with our vassals and our faction, or is it only our faction relation? Probably just our faction, so that might not be worth it, but the money could be worth it. So we'll take her, why not? And no, we don't actually gain anything with anyone, so it appears that that was a little bit wasteful, perhaps, but what would we have gained otherwise? Some honor, yes. We would have gained some honor, and that pretty much would be it, so... Not entirely sure if that would have been worth it anyway. So there it is. Yes, as you can see, we are surrounded by a huge amount of step bandits right here. Ikema has quite the problem with these particular bandits. And I actually think I'm going to be heading in here just to check out to see whether there is a ransom broker. Oh, here's Artie Mena though. Wait a second. Am I going to take even more companions? <laughs> Probably not a good idea. Wait a second. Let's take a look. Who is our engineer right now? Ah, Ninok, of course. Ninok is our engineer. So, no, we will not be taking Artie Mena because he does have a problem with one of our units here. I do believe it is Jeremus. And I don't believe I've turned off companion complaints, or have I? Maybe I've turned off companion complaints. I'm not entirely sure. It appears as though I may have because it's been a while since anyone has complained about anyone, and we have so many companions that... You would expect one of them to at least speak up about potential misgivings about a particular companion in our ranks. So, let's just level up all of our units as best we can right here. Mercenary swordsmen, horsemen. Let's get some regular mercenary mages. Don't really want to get the renegade ones. And, oh, why do I have Kurgid units? Hmm, I must have gathered some of those from rescued prisoners, but... Yeah, I am probably going to be switching those out very, very soon. So, let's take a look at our faction relations right now. As you can see, we are only at war against the 
blazing hand, which is absolutely fine with me. There are no other fiefs, as far as I am aware. No other fiefs that we can take. I am just wondering whether someone has defected to them in the past and maybe brought something that is a little bit further away from their regular territory, but it appears as though that will not be the case this time around. And we do have two very significant territories in Calradia to control right now. I'm just worried, actually, to see whether either the Rydus Majocracy, the Bleeding Throat Clan, or the Drow factions would decide to declare war against us. I don't think we have any threat from the Elves, even though their vassals are incredibly good. Many of them have defected to us. So, <laughs> yes, there is that to take into account. Okay, well, I think what we're going to do, we're going to head back to Kudan. And we're going to see what we can do with some of our vassals there. I'm thinking we can probably accept another one. Wait a second, Sir Kagar? Where? Oh, how dare you. Looting our previous village, if you recall, when we became a vassal of the Blazing Hand. We were given ownership of Zagush. Uh, that grinds my gears, that does. I cannot believe that he would hit us so hard right there. Hmm. Okay, well, I think we're probably going to head down there. Are we going to head down there? It might be a waste of time, to be honest. It might be a waste of time. Wait a minute, or maybe not. Hello, Sir Kegar. Okay, so he's moving at 5 and we're moving at 4.4. We're never going to catch him. I wish he had more units. That's all I can say. Maybe we can catch him? Whoa! He actually stopped? Oh my goodness. That is pretty impressive, I have to say. Now, let's see. How do you feel about Grandmaster... Hmm. He likes her a little bit too much, it appears. Okay. Well, yeah, considering he had 30 relation, I thought it may be possible to potentially try to persuade him to join us, but no such luck this time around. So, we'll just have to deal with the small amount of morale and, indeed, renown that we may gain from this battle. And then we'll be heading on to Kudan. Thankfully enough, he won't be around to raid any more of our villages. That is always a good thing. And then, hopefully, many of their other vassals will decide just to wait it out and see where they're going to be heading. No doubt they're going to be inquiring with many of the other leaders in the world. And they'll see who they can join. So, let's make sure that we are in a good enough position right here. I actually do like to just charge straight on in and leave our archers behind. That does appear to be some of the best tactics that we can currently come up with right now. Considering we do outnumber them so heavily, I do not believe it will be too difficult. And, of course, we would like to... Ooh, look at that guy's sword. He's using a very nice sword right there. I do believe that is the vassal himself. So, it would be quite nice if we were able to take him out. But I don't think it would be a great loss if we didn't. Or never mind. So Kegar was taken out by a mercenary mage. Wow, that's rather impressive if I do say so myself. Okay, so yeah, let's just try and focus on many of the units that are currently running around right here. But it appears as though many of our units are just absolutely destroying them. Wow, they must have been wounded. They must have been wounded from a previous battle. Otherwise, I think it would have taken us a lot longer to be able to take those guys out. And yes, so... On the way to Kudan, we're probably going to be recruiting as many units as we can because, of course, we do want to make sure that we have a good supply of Blazing Hand units that can level up once we have made peace with the Order themselves. I'm hopeful that they'll actually do that rather soon. As you can see, the morale is really hitting us hard, and Sir Mazrob has escaped from captivity. That is not too good, but yeah, at least it wasn't... Grandmaster Tenalia herself, but oh my, Mr. Lugi Ortracker of the Elf Alliance. Well, I cannot believe that he joined the Elves, but there it is. I really wished that he would join us, but hmm, what can you do, I suppose? And ooh, I actually thought that they were declaring war against us for a second there, but no, the Kurgits are attempting to expand their territory against the Bleeding Throat Clan. I do see why they would do such a thing. The Bleeding Throat Clan has been encroaching upon their territory for quite some time, and has indeed taken many of their forces 
and indeed fiefs too. So, yes, we have now nothing to eat. I did make a brief stopover at Nara because I wanted to hopefully stem the tide of morale that we are currently hemorrhaging, but yes, I don't know whether it really helped. So, let's take a look here. Let's take some of this grain, take some of this food. And there we go. Thank you very much. So let's just manage the garrison for now. I do believe we're going to be putting everyone that is a Blazing Hand unit, at least, into the garrison, as well as some Saranids and Kurgits. We'll put all those guys in there. I don't really like to use other factions' units unless they are elves, maybe even dwarves as well, because, of course, they are... I don't know, just unusual. I like it when they're unusual, and they're a little bit unique when it comes to fighting, and they do have some rather nice abilities as well, but yeah, let's just take a look here. We want to put these Serenids in here as well. Some Vajirs. I like to use the Vajir Hiero monks, and generally using the units that are faith-based, but everything else I can basically put into the garrison. Not too bad about that. And let's see, Rodok Priests, yes, yeah, Swadian Pasteurs, that's fine. I actually think I should put everyone in the garrison here because we are just losing so many units due to morale penalties right now that I think that it would be really bad if we just had a couple of Dwarven Paragons and then we just lost six of them. That would be incredibly bad. So let's just put all these guys in here. And I think what I will do is after I have taken a look in the castle of Kudan for any potential vassals that want to join us. We are going to be cutting away and just resting here for a little bit of time, make sure that our morale gets back to its normal state. So let's take a look. Who can we take? I don't really want to take anyone that is not going to work with our other vassals, but that's going to be very difficult, I do believe. That is going to be incredibly difficult. So I'm not entirely sure whether it's even going to be possible. Hmm. It actually appears it's not going to be possible right now. Nope, it appears not. Okay, so let's take a look here. One of my vassals a thief, and whoa, we have a lot of castles. What? Why do we have so many things that are unassigned? Wait a minute, I'm going to take ownership of all of these. I'm going to take ownership of a lot, because right now we have a couple of difficulties with our... Wages. We are still gaining 1300, but that's not really as much as I would like. But nevertheless, I think that is fine. We've given ourselves a few castles, and I think we'll now give... Let's take a look here. We'll take this and give this to Divinath. Yes, he still needs a little bit of relation here. I do want them to be able to field the most units that they can, so hopefully that will be fine. And that has increased... By a little bit, only by three, but I suppose it's better than decreasing, so that's not too bad. So yes, there we go, there's Rogi getting another ten relation with us right there. And I think we'll assign one more before we go and rest. There is a huge amount of villages right here, oh my goodness, it kind of makes me feel like I should just take them all myself, but that's a little bit too greedy perhaps. Okay. There we go. Thank you very much. Let's recruit some... Nope. Uh, yes, we're not going to be recruiting from here anytime soon. But yeah, we'll wait here for some time. I will be recruiting a couple of units off screen as soon as our morale has improved. And hopefully, the Blazing Hand will make peace with us very soon. Okay, so as you can see, we have now been granted a peace agreement offer by the Blazing Hand, and this is actually going to be something I will be accepting, I do believe. I have had Sir Kagar be rather irritating over the past five minutes, maybe even the past ten minutes, but yes, for the past five minutes he's been attempting so much to loot as many villages as he can, and I've been attempting to track him down, but the most irritating thing about it is that he's only running around with himself. He has no units whatsoever, so he's just looting all by himself, and as a result, he is incredibly fast. He is like the roadrunner of Cowradia. He is that fast, and unfortunately, we were unable to catch him. So, thankfully enough, Order of the Blazing Hand offering us a peace agreement. Very nice indeed, and we will be accepting that. Thank you very much. There we go. So yes, I've been waiting at Kudan for some time now, and aha! As you can see, as soon as we made peace, we have Sir Ionan, Sir Roy Daran, all renouncing their allegiance and 
changing faction. Unfortunately, it appears as though not any of them are. Kaventim has joined us, as well as Sir Gavid, and Oraka as well, and there we have it. The Order of the Blazing Hand is no more. That is pretty sad to see, I have to say, but I suppose they were at war with us, and they did declare war against us to begin with, so I suppose we shouldn't really feel too sorry, but it was the first faction that we joined, and they were pretty nice for the most part, apart from declaring war upon us just now, but yes. Still, that's not too bad if I do so myself. So, yeah, let's see here. What are we going to do? What is our tactic going to be? Because what we can do right now is we can either accept all of these fellows and make an entire mess of our relations, or we can tell them to go away, and then they'll join other factions, and those factions will potentially become very powerful. Or we just leave them. So, it's... One of those very difficult decisions. I think I may just leave it for now, and we'll come back to it at a later point. But, yes, I'll think about it a little bit, and we'll see where it goes from there. But, for now, I do believe we are going to be leveling up a couple of our units right here. They have leveled up rather significantly from our trainer skill being so effective, apparently. And, yes, <laughs> it appears they do like to level up rather a lot. Oh my goodness, this is the downside. This is definitely the downside of having so many companions. Okay, ooh, very nice. More surgery, more wound treatment from Jaramus right there. Exactly what we want to see. And Baron Burr, maybe we can... Oh my goodness, look at how intelligent this fellow is. 26 intelligence, that is insane. More trainer skill, thank you very much. And then we'll level up a little bit of his two-handed, just in case he does end up using a two-handed at some point. I don't think it's very likely, but you never know. You never know. So, let's see. What else do we want to get here? More magic defense, I do believe, for Ninok. Make sure she doesn't die as quickly to the various mages that we will potentially be fighting soon, because the Riders Majorocracy may see fit to attack us. So, we need to be a little bit cautious about that. Even though I've noticed when we've seen a Riders Majorocracy vassal, they do actually have quite a strange amount of units in their armies. They have a very limited amount in their armies in comparison to others. So I can assume that what is happening is that they have such a small army because they have so many powerful units, so it's balanced a little bit more that way. Because I have a feeling that if they were allowed to have 120, 150 units, maybe even 200, then I feel like they would probably just steamroll everything. So there is that to take into account. But there's also the fact that they're probably going to take out 50 of our units in one spell. Barrage. So we do need to watch out for that too. So let's level up our strength a little bit here. Let's get a little bit more in Power Strike, shouldn't we? Wait a minute. What else can we get here? Well, our magic defense is absolutely terrible. Maybe we'll want to get a little bit more of that soon. Or maybe now? We are level 32. It kind of makes me wonder what I spec'd in. But yes, then I look down here and we've spec'd into entertainment, faith, leadership, which is all good. No problem there, but entertainment, mm, not entirely sure. Maybe I should not have done that. But it was fun. It was fun to try it out anyway. So, hmm. 60 HP, and we could go for a little bit more magic defense, or we could go for 62 HP, or 8% more melee damage. I think our melee damage is okay at the moment. And it's just us surviving against spells, so I think magic defense is going to be perfectly fine for this. And there we have it. Okay, that is very nice indeed. So I'm going to be waiting here for some time. Going to hopefully get all of our villages back to a somewhat average, maybe even rich status. And hopefully make a bundle of money as time goes on. But yes... Without further ado, I will be ending this episode off here, and next time on Fantasy Cal Radio, we are going to see whether any of the other factions think they can take us. I do not believe they will be able to, but you never know. Someone may be confident enough to attack us with reckless abandon. But, I just want to know, after we have rested sufficiently and gotten all of our villages back up onto full speed, as well as, of course, recruited a whole new bunch of Blazing Hand units and leveled them up 
Maybe to infantry, maybe to footmen, we'll see. But yeah, they should really level up very, very fast from just fighting things. Which faction do you guys think we should go for next? If we should go for any faction, maybe we should just allow an enemy faction to attack us. But at the moment, I have... Hmm. At the moment, I have two thoughts. One of the thoughts is... Nords. Are we going to attack the Nords? I think maybe that would be a good idea, because as you can probably see right here, the Nords have not been touched. They have not been touched at all. And I actually find that rather puzzling, and maybe... <laughs> oh, yes, I've actually just had a thought. An additional thought about the Nords. Maybe the reason they haven't been attacked is because... That is exactly the reason. They haven't been attacked. They haven't been weakened at all. They are just that strong that no one wants to attack them right now because it's been so long since anyone has actually attacked. Maybe that would be it. And then the other thought is, of course, to take out the Orcs, the Bleeding Throat Clan, because, of course, we are technically a seeker of evil and we wish to destroy that evil and potentially convert them to our own means but i'll leave that to you so yes let me know in the comments what you think and we'll go from there so i thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time